Hot off the back of the last video I did where we looked at the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G APU. These are the CPUs with built in Vega graphics into the CPU, allowing you to build a system without a dedicated graphics card in there. And it performed like an absolute champ with Autodesk V-Red, that high-end automotive rendering solution. So I had a few people asking, well, what about the likes of Fusion 360, mate? What about Inventor? key shot that kind of thing so we're gonna look at fusion 360 in this video uh the system that i'm using i'm just going to briefly cover it again because uh, you might not have seen the last video it's a ryzen 5 2400g running at complete stock settings four cores eight threads with a stock cooler motherboard is an asus prime beef 350m micro atx board the ram that i'm using although i've got this one here kingston and pc part picker i'm actually using gale evo x 16 gig two eight gig sticks at 3000 megahertz ram storage is the intel 600p 128 gig solid state drive of thermal take core v21 micro atx case and 550 watt power supply you can skimp a nickel and dime on this build if you wanted to you could shave a few quid off the power supply the ram the motherboard if you want to to get this build below 500 quid but i do again need to make a point of saying that i'm not recommending that anybody does this in a commercial space this is purely for people who are wanting to follow tutorials just to learn the applications in the want a system that will work it's not going to be supported by the vendors autodesk the likes of those bigger companies that make the software they're not going to support an apu they're going to want you to use a system with a dedicated graphics card but what i'm doing here is just showing that it does work it will work it works well it's just not going to be supported in a commercial space so that that's an important differentiation to make right what you're looking at on screen here is a video a pre-recorded video of me using fusion 360 with this amd ryzen 5 apu i couldn't record audio at the time of doing this so i'm just gonna to have to talk over the top of it which should be fine it's fine at the bottom right of the screen those are the msi afterburner stats showing the cpu and gpu performance i'm not going to cover what each number means this will go on forever if i did but anybody interested in those stats, I'm sure you're going to know what those mean anyway. Over the top right, that's AMD OCAT just showing the FPS, and that should match up with the bottom line in the MSI afterburner stats. Uh, the control panel on screens, just to con just to confirm that we are in fact using the 2400G. Uh, and in the device manager, we're just going to confirm that we are in fact using the onboard graphics on the CPU. There is no dedicated graphics card in there. Uh, the installed RAM, you can see I've got 16 gig, 13.9 usable. That means that I have allocated 2 gig of system RAM to act as video RAM for the CPU. You can allocate less than that in the BIOS, but it does take a huge performance hit on professional applications if you do that. Uh, that was noticeable and tangible. Uh, on my testing anyway. So Fusion 360, here we go. Right, I've got three models that I'm gonna work with. I'm not gonna do anything too strenuous. This is just to show that it does actually open the models. You do get reasonable performance with them, but there are a couple of things that didn't go brilliantly but it's it's fine it's fine for a system that costs less than 500 quid it's absolutely fine you can take the trade off uh, and i'll show you what those are in a second so the three models we've got the 666m alloy wheel that i modeled up on my channel uh from the the, the bmw m4 competition pack uh, and the m3 competition pack and we've got the gtx 970 graphics card which uh, again i modeled up on my channel and i've ported across into fusion 360 from inventor and then we've got the pedal set from the BAC Mono Race Car. Uh, and then hopping on over into a new part in Fusion 360. So the first thing that I wanted to just point out with these uh, Ryzen 5 CPUs, and this is not limited to just the Ryzen 5 CPUs. Uh, this will be anything with a slightly lower clock speed and uh, just possibly lower end hardware, is that when you're doing sketches, when you're doing anything in the sketch environment, as you're moving the mouse around, you can see there's a there's a noticeable, quite distracting lag on the cursor following where the mouse arrow is. I don't know why this is doing that. I don't know why they've designed Fusion 360 work, to work in this way. There's even noticeable lag when you're running it on an 8700K. It's just absolutely nowhere near as bad as it is here. Uh, it's not game breaking or anything like that, but it is quite distracting. And I definitely wouldn't want to work all day, every day with this kind of a lag on the cursor. And this lag occurs not only when there's just nothing going on in the sketch environment and you're just following your mouse arrow around, but also when you activate like the sketch tools, uh, so lines, circles, arcs, dimensions, it's uh, it's it's really distracting actually. It's definitely not something that I would say avoid buying one of these CPUs for if you want to use Fusion 360, but it is just something to be aware of. You will see that and it's not just you. So hopping on over to the pedal set and uh, just doing a quick performance test on the visuals on the pedal set. You can see on an orbit we're getting roughly... Uh, between 20 and 30 fps which isn't brilliant but it's up it's fine it's it's workable as long as it's not below 10 so you can see noticeable stuttering uh, that's absolutely fine i'm just going to quickly pause the video now and just show you that this is enabled with full visual effects on it so we've got ground shadows we've got reflections we've got ambient occlusion we've got uh, anti-aliasing on so this is a fully loaded visual set 
uh, and with an assembly of this size, it's still workable. When you're doing the, the orbit in Fusion 360, you can still feel, although you can't visually see it, you can still feel the cursor lag very, very slightly as you're moving the mouse to, um, to make that orbit. It is lagging maybe half a second behind your cursor, which again is distracting. It feels a bit sluggish, but it works it works it's not unstable there's no crashing it's absolutely fine uh, hopping on over to the graphics card uh, just a different sized assembly and doing an orbit it's got a little bit more detail in this assembly than it does in the pedal set so we are starting to get below 10 fps on that one there so that is a little bit stuttery and then on the single part model still we're getting around 20 to 30 fps on this single part model with all the visual effects enabled which is fine absolutely fine like i said with a system worth less than 500 quid and no graphics card you are to expect some some degradation performance it's not going to be buttery smooth nobody's going to be expecting that and then when we turn the visual effects off you can see that it does pick up and it jumps on up to roughly around 60 fps i'm i am wondering actually a little bit just hitting pause in the video there if um if there's any kind of v-sync enabled in fusion 360 i did dive around the settings but because it was sort of locked between 25 and 30 there and then it jumped up to roughly near 60 uh there is a chance that there is some kind of v-sync enabled in the engine but I, I couldn't find a setting for that and i couldn't find anything in the graphics drivers either uh, but I wasn't getting that in Inventor on this uh, 2400G. When I was doing similar tests in Inventor, that was going way above 60 FPS uh, in, a, in an empty environment. So it's definitely not a driver level V-Sync if it is on, but uh, it is something that I'm noticing in Fusion 360. Another thing I've noticed as well, this might be a Fusion 360 bug. I don't think it's unique to the CPU. But what I did in the alloy rim, I turned off all the visual settings. I turned off anti-aliasing, the shadows, the reflections. I've hopped on over to this graphics card assembly and you can see all the visual effects are still enabled. But then when I go into the graphics options here in this menu, you can see that they're actually still on, even though the boxes are unticked, which is which it's that's got to be some kind of bug there you can see there that i've got all the boxes unchecked aside from ground plane and environment dome and then what happens is if you tick each of the boxes and then untick them immediately it just sort of like refreshes that setting and then it turns them off so ambient occlusion object shadow ground reflection it's it's a bit weird it, it is a bit weird i don't think that's something to do with the cpu i think that's probably a fusion 360 application bug same with the pedal set you can see we've still got all the reflections and the shadows on on that pedal set even though the boxes are unticked so i'm just going to go through and untick all of those uh, give those settings a kick in the backside and you can see it's picked up quite a bit on the assembly set so uh, as long as you're happy to disable some of the visual effects we are getting reasonable performance and that did jump and spike above 60 fps you can see we're hitting 70s uh, on this assembly set which is pretty good actually that's that's absolutely more than enough uh, for a, a data set in Fusion 360, especially on a system with no graphics card. So what I'm doing now is I'm hopping over to the uh, the new part environment. I'm just going to model up something really simple. I'm just going to look at what it's, what it's like to actually create geometry in Fusion 360 on the APU instead of just opening up data sets and uh, just seeing how they perform visually. Uh, and honestly, it was smooth. There's, there's no visual glitches. Everything's performing as expected. Manually pulling the extrusions, manually placing fillets, creating patterns, creating work planes. Uh, no problems whatsoever. Uh, th there is always that little bit of a latency, a little bit of lag on the on the cursor as you're moving your, your mouse hour around. But aside from that, it worked fine. There you can see we've just done a slice graphics. It worked fine. No visual bugs, no issues. Normally when you're running a, a system without supported graphics drivers, you normally get some glitches and the things like shadows and reflections and... Uh, it's it's fine. So Autodesk will still say that they're not going to support the CPU, I would suspect, because it's not a dedicated graphics card. There's no way Autodesk are going to get a, an APU and then validate that on their applications. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so it's I guess it's my job to just make sure that these things work. Uh, so as, as long as I say it's not supported and you understand that, then it should be fine. I'm not seeing any issues at all. So I'm just going to forward this through to where I get into a bit more solid modeling. So we've got the patterns here. We're creating whole features uh we're doing arrays it's it's all it's all fine uh no issues at all and then just jumping ahead to the ray tracing environment you can see the footage in the background where i'm applying just a very very basic in canvas render to this part model and it's again again it's doing the job it's not going to set the world on fire it's not going to create a, a phenomenal scene in two shakes of a lamb's tail but it, it's it's working it's doing it just fine so uh, no problems there whatsoever i'm happy with that so there you go that's the 2400g working working 
I wouldn't say flawlessly because there is that bit of lag on the cursor, but that's something which I would be happy to cope with if I was running a system worth less than 500 quid uh, on an application like Fusion 360. Aside from that, I'm happy to recommend this to anybody that's looking to use Fusion 360 uh, as a home user, as a student, uh, or as anybody just learning the application, following tutorials, that kind of thing. But I, I cannot make the recommendation for it to be used in a commercial space. That's not something that I'm prepared to do. Uh, anybody that's thinking, well, where, where's the benchmarks? Where, where's the comparisons with, with higher-end systems? If, if I did that, I, I get flamed for stuff like that. So I'm not going to perform any benchmarks for, and compare it against like an 8700K or even a Ryzen 7 with a dedicated graphics card. That's not fair. The only thing I really wanted to accomplish in this video is to make sure that the uh, the APU works with Fusion 360. It works reliably uh, and it performs okay. And it does. It performs okay. On higher end assemblies, I can't test every assembly set to, to, to every extent, but I would imagine on heavier data sets, the performance will tank down quite considerably. You saw the size of the assemblies I had open in this video, so if, if you're thinking, well, what about the assemblies that I use? Well, look at the ones I was using, and then you can probably just picture how much. It's, so it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better on bigger assemblies, so... If you're experiencing performance of less than around 10 FPS, that's when you need to start thinking about a dedicated graphics card. Uh, and one good option could be using the AMD WX3100, which is that $200 professional graphics card that I've done a video on already. Something to think about is uh, is to put the WX3100 in with the Ryzen 5 2400G, but then it sort of begs the question, well, what's the point in having an APU if you are going to buy a dedicated graphics card? So I'm not too sure if that is something that is worth doing, unless you are going to buy the 2400G for now, uh, without a graphics card and then look to put a, a gpu in later on but yeah i'm gonna knock it on the head there thank you very much for your time thank you very much for watching if you found the video useful do please press like and uh subscribe for more stuff like this if you're interested do let me know in the comments down below and if you've got any requests on stuff you want to see like this in the future do please let me know so uh, thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one toodles